Welcome to Pure Talk, a show where we talk about faith, culture, and so much more. I am Billy Hollowell, and I'm excited to be here today for a special Mother's Day episode of the show. We have some great guests for you. We have Greg Gudorf, CEO of PureFlix.com. We also have actress and author Roma Downey. How are you guys doing today? Great, Billy. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Well, happy Mother's Day, Roma. Thank you. Um, you know, I wanted to I wanted to just jump in and because we are here at Mother's Day, I wanted to ask what what does this holiday mean to you, Roma? Well, you know, for um, I think for we all share the fact that we've all had a mother. Um, I am a mother, and um, I think it's just a day to put aside to honor the the mothers of the, of our world and um, all the nurturing love. Um, I, I lost my mother when I was a very young child, Billy. And so over the course of my life, Mother's Day sometimes arrived and brought with it a little hint of sorrow because it reminded me of what I didn't have. And then I was so fortunate for many years in my life that I was given back a mother in the fabulous Della Reese. Um, and then this is my first Mother's Day without Della because she just passed at the end of last year. But, you know, I think it's just a way to honor the great women in our lives and the women who have loved us and, and been there, loved us unconditionally. Yeah. And I've heard you speak in the past, I believe, and I know that you've written on this a little bit about motherhood and how it's impacted you, you know, being a mother. And so I wanted to just ask you a little bit about that, how, you know, your life has changed as a mother. Yeah, well, I think that um, the girl that, that, lost her mother, I often imagined myself with a hole inside of me, a little bit like perhaps I would imagine somebody who's lost a limb, that you learn to adapt and you learn to, to uh, get on with, without it, but the, the, you know, the, the missing. So I had this longing my whole life that had a great big H-O-L-E, and yet I felt when I finally became a mother, um, it was as if a W had been put in front of that hole and gave me a wholeness. Um, and I have loved mothering and I also am a stepmother, which is a, um, also been just such a great blessing in my life, not to have children, but to have additional children, all the more to love. I love the wordplay there with the W in the hole. I, I like that. You know, Roma, one of the things that I really appreciate uh, about you and obviously I've I followed uh, from the TV and the video work that you've done but also on the business we've had several conversations on the business front as well and one of the things that I really appreciate is you never appear afraid to share straight from the heart is that something that you cultivate and something that you consciously look to put out there or is that just the way it works for you I think maybe it's just the way it works for me, but um, I um, I think that when we share from the heart, we invite others to <clears throat> that to be comfortable with their own vulnerabilities, you know. And in my experience, everybody's got something that they feel vulnerable about, and that oftentimes that's where the the realest side of you can show up. I mean, in business and in our social lives and in our friendships, so often I think we feel that we have to put the sort of perfect part of ourselves forward, certainly on social media now, right? Nobody's yeah. posting about their worst day, you know, right. my really bad hair day um, uh, or whatever it is. But I think when you're willing just to step in to say, here it is, you know, warts and all, that, that it creates a comfort level for people that they feel they can also share their authentic self. And when you meet on that level, then I think you really meet people, you know. And I'm really interested in people. I'm interested in, in you know, how we each can show up for each other. It shows and it comes across. You're always quick to offer gratitude too, I've noticed. I appreciate that. Yes, well, I do. I try to live my life in gratitude. And I certainly feel that when we pay attention to the things that we have, 
um, as opposed to keeping our focus on what we don't have. Because I think there's always something we think we might be happier if we had, you know. Personally, I know if I'd had longer legs, <laughs> I would have had a much happier one. Um, we can always look over there and say, oh gosh, I wish what she had, or she's got a better, you know, or they've got a bigger, or they've got more. But when we keep our focus on what we've got and, you know, you count your blessings, I just think you magnify the love in your life. Yeah, you know, one of the things I would say about you, Rama, just having gotten to know you over the years is the the authenticity factor is that you're always authentic. And, you know, you have a, a new book out and it's called Box of Butterflies, Discovering the Unexpected Blessings All Around Us. And in that book, that authenticity really comes through. And it's a really personal book. And I wanted to ask you what that process was like deciding you know what parts of your life which were very per personal parts of your life to share and and just take me through a little bit of that and and what what you feel about that final product and what you're hoping people take away from that well i um I, yeah i wrote this book really and i talk about feeling vulnerable because i really did uh, decide to open up on on the losses and the longings of my own heart. But it did so really with the intention and the hope that by sharing these, these things that have hurt me and how, um, and sharing my faith and how God has always shown up for me, even when, you know, I thought I was uh, alone, um, that I haven't been. The journey of my life, uh, God has met me every step of the way and sometimes it's through the struggle i use the metaphor of a butterfly in box of butterflies i use the metaphor of the butterfly for that which is in all of us that we you know if we only knew when we were a caterpillar if we only knew when we were going through the struggles that that sometimes uh, it's the very pain that will will create the character or will bring the people in that are going to be the reason that you fly, you know? But I would sit here. I, ha I have my book here. I just wanted to show you too because it's, it's very spring-like. Um, it's a beautiful book cover. I love that book cover. As we deal with the, the Mother's Day season, I think it, it makes for a beautiful book. And many of the stories in the book are mother-daughter themed from... Uh, the title was inspired from my own childhood when mom, mom passed and my dad took me up to the cemetery and um, we took flowers to put on her graveside. I was just 10 and she had died unexpectedly of a heart attack. And we put the flowers on her grave and a real butterfly flew by and my dad said, would you look at that butterfly? It could be the, the spirit of your mom right there. And I can't tell you as a 10 year old child the comfort that that brought me that somehow my mom was still around me you know and so the butterfly came to symbolize um this you know the fact that god and and mom and you know that i wasn't on my own in the journey through my life and butterflies have just continued to show up whether they were on a piece of jewelry or on a tattoo but in the most extraordinary ways you know that when I felt like I needed them the most. And so I sat down to write this book. It took me, I guess, from beginning to end, I've been working on it almost two years. And, um, and to finally share it feels uh, incredible. It came out in the beginning of March. And so people have already had a chance, some people have had an early chance to read it. And the feedback has been extraordinary because I think anybody who's ever lost anyone which let's face it is just about everyone um, has been touched by losing someone. I think that it speaks especially to the heart on those matters of, you know, that, that and the promise that we as Christians have that, um, that we will all be together again. So it's a book about hope and it's a book of comfort and encouragement. I like the idea of using the butterfly as uh, the reminder to stop, be in the now, and recognize that you're in his presence. I think that was one of the lines that I took from some of the reading that I did of, of the book. And I think that's a great way to remember just how special life really is. 
in the softness and the quiet of a butterfly. Yes, so I remember um, reading about a little child that, that saw the uh, cocoon and the struggle within it and thought if he got a little pair of manicure scissors that he could cut open and would do this butterfly a favor to help eliminate the struggle. And of course, what emerged out of that cocoon was a little soggy winged creature unable to fly because sometimes it's the very struggle that we need and you know to be reminded of that because we all go through seasons in our life right I mean this as I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation this is my first Mother's Day without Della Reese and Della Reese was my co-star on Touched by an Angel but she was so much more she was my mentor she was my mother she was a great wonderful wise loving woman and uh, it was my privilege and pleasure to have loved her for all those years and um you know i could look towards this mother's day just with heartache for the emptiness of not having her but there's a choice i think we always get to choose how we're going to feel about something and i would much rather and i know she would much rather i embraced this mother's day and said you know i'm so grateful that i had her in my life i'm so grateful that i was able to love her and that she was able to love me and I know that God brought us together in each other's lives. And so I think we just have, you know, we, we can also play a part in how we choose to see uh, what's happening in our lives. But I think sometimes the struggle, um, there's no way through it, but through it. Well, and it's interesting too, because when I think back to this vision of, you know, butterflies and they've popped up for you throughout your life in different ways and at different times, I think through this notion of comfort that God gives us things to comfort us sometimes and that that, that could be something for you that God has given you consistently to remind you of that and that that can be open to all of us. You know, there are things I can think of and I know I've actually shared with you some things before where I've, I've had something reoccur that's actually brought me peace. And so it just is a reminder of that connection that we can have. It's just a symbol, Billy. It's not like it's the be all and end all, but I have, they've been, it's been extraordinary how many coincidences I've had in my life where they've shown up, you know, where, and usually after I've prayed, you know, I've felt, alone and I've sort of reached out and said you know God be with me please you know show me the way let me know the right decision to make because I can't think of anything in my life any decision big or small that I didn't pray about first and you know and then I've shuffled into some diner in New York back in the early days particularly when I was a struggling actor um, with no chance of work it seemed ever and yet another rejection and just feeling useless and worthless and sitting to order a cup of coffee on a wet day and the, the waiter coming over with a strong New York accent that I can't do right <laughs> now going, hey honey, you know, what do you need? And suddenly, you know, the flick of the wrist and you see a butterfly tattoo and you just, and you just bring such peace. You think, okay, strength to, you know, strength to keep going. It's like just little reminders. Yeah, yeah. Love, and that's, so I just have been so grateful for those reminders. And when I was out on book tour, I met so many people, so many amazing people. And honestly, America is just filled with a million stories and each one better than the next. But people coming up and sharing with me that they had a butterfly significance, or maybe their significance was a hummingbird, or there was, you know, a red umbrella. I don't know. It's just something that has shown up and shown up repeatedly as little signposts that they've made the right choices or that they've, they're on the right road or they're not alone. Because I think, you know, social media is great. We're all much more connected to each other than we used to be. But I think that very connection can sometimes let people also feel very isolated. Like it has the opposite effect, you know, because we're, we're not in conversation with each other. And, and while I'm delighted to see you both, a version of you <laughs> guys today, you know, it doesn't, it's not really a substitute for sitting down yeah. together, you know, and the, and the camaraderie that comes from just looking somebody in the eyes and really being present with each other and for each other. So I think there's a lot of people that feeling lonely and a little bit disconnected out there. And I think when these little signals, little signposts come up, it's just a great reassurance that we're not alone, you know, and that, that I, I, um, 
when I was a, a young a, a woman, young girl, my father gave me the Footprints poem. Do you remember that one? Oh, yes, yeah. One, it's been one of my favorites my whole life. But when dad gave it to me, it was the first time I'd ever seen it. And I read it and it just made me cry because the idea that you feel, particularly when you're going through something painful, some kind of crisis in your life, we so often feel that we're carrying that burden by ourselves. And, and, and the Footprints poem had that beautiful imagery of the woman saying, Lord, why when I needed you the most? Are there only one set of footprints in my life? And of course, Jesus answered her, because those were the times that I carried you. And, um, and that just really resonates with me, you know? It's powerful. It's powerful. It's a powerful image. And um, um, anyway, these are the, the kinds of things that I wanted to discuss in my book, Box of Butterflies. It's just, um, it's, Let me ask you this, um, as a mother and as a Christian, what, what concerns you the most uh, where we are sort of, you, know, you talked a little bit about people feeling maybe disconnected and isolated. Just when you look at where we are right now, what are some of the things that concern you in light of you having children who are in the world going out into the world? Well, I mean, gosh, it's like, what doesn't concern me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have kids as well, you know? Um, you know, I, I think while my kids were growing up, my kids are, are raised now. I know they're, they never stop being your kids, but our youngest son just turned 21, which seemed like a very symbolic uh, age. We still have two in college. Our oldest son is, uh, is uh, uh, out and uh, working in the musical industry. And so I worry about them. You know, I worry about their, you know, the company they keep and the, and the choices that they make and I just keep praying with them and praying for them that they make good choices for themselves you know I think one of the the, the, the biggest values virtues that we encourage from all of our children when they were growing up was that they would be kind and considerate um, and not just of each other but of anybody that they met that they would lead with kindness and that they would see the value in that you know and one of my f favorite all-time uh, quotes from a really great lady who I admired was Dr. Maya Angelou. And she says that people are gonna forget what you said and they'll forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And um, I really believe that, you know, it's like, and I think that's a way that we also can demonstrate our faith in the world is by you know stepping up do you remember that song when we were kids that they would know we are christians by our love do you remember that one? Oh and yeah i just you know as, as as simple as that sounds it's um it's it's something active that we can continue to do each of us and at a time i think where there needs to be a little bit more kindness brought into the the dialogue that's oh, yes. <laughs> in all levels of our society, you know, whether it's in our politics or on social media, you know, you know, we're all active on there. It's a great way for us to let people know about the great work that we're doing, the great work that you're doing at Pure Flix, the great work that we're doing at Lightworkers. We love the opportunity of being able to relate to people on social media, but because people out there are all hiding behind these different names and these anonymous uh, positions, you know, the people will say the most outrageous and hurtful things. They would and, never say it to your face, though. That's, it, it's, it's so strange. Yes, well, it's because it's like a kind of cowardly, really, I suppose. But I'm a big believer um, of if you've nothing nice to say, say nothing you know, <laughs> right. or, or there's a different way to engage in a dialogue i mean surely we've never always agreed with each other you know i mean even and that's though, okay <laughs> in my family we don't agree with each other but we know how to talk to each other in a way it's like i hear what you're saying i don't agree what you're saying this is what i'm saying you know and there's a way to do that with with kindness and with grace absolutely absolutely well Greg, any final questions or comments for Rowan? No, I was pondering that that is good motherly advice for <laughs> all of us, not just the mothers, as we yeah. go into Mother's yeah. Day. 
It is. Also, Happy Mother's Day, Roma. You both know I grew up in Ireland where everything happened over a cup of tea. <laughs> um, all the solutions of the world could be solved over a cup of tea. And there's just something about the ritual of making the tea that you have to take a space so we don't have to live between, you know, stimulus and response. There is a space. And, um, you know, whether you have a cup of tea in that space, whether you say a quick prayer in that space, we all need to, I think, live a little bit more in the pause and not be in reaction to each other. Well, Roma, thank you so much for joining us. All of you, thank you for watching. You can tune into Pure Talk over on our Facebook page and also on pureflix.com. Have a great day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, everybody.